Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to the Nova Wrap, your one-stop location for your simulation release news and goings on from the week that was. So here we are on Sunday the 30th of July 2017 for another episode and we're going to launch straight into it with the quick wrap up and the one that a lot of users have been hanging off I know in the P3D version 4 updates. And of course I am talking about the venerable PMDG uh, announcement. So, PMDG have now confirmed that the 737, 600 and 700 expansion is now fully compatible with version 4 which now brings up to date um, all of their core product line and to make it fully compatible with version 4. So uh, that has, I know there's been a long awaited update for the PMDG, for PMDG users um, and uh, a very uh, a long awaited one as I said there because it is uh, you know quite the, the popular aircraft. Um, for those who do have, or did purchase it from direct from PMDG um, it is just simply log into your client and, uh, and download the uh, version to the installer again to update. Uh, for those who've purchased through Aerosoft, you uh, do have to wait. Looks like they didn't quite get the update out on for the weekend, um, so you are going to have to possibly looks like you are going to have to wait for Monday for that one. But uh, as I said, the update is coming, so uh, go forth and download and enjoy your up to date PMDG 737-600. In other update news this week, we saw the guys from Dovetail Games release their latest update for Flight Sim World, which was their True Sky update. So two fairly significant updates um, in two weeks. They're, these guys are really pushing hard on the development schedule at the moment. Um, to be honest, I, I'm actually hoping. I'm, I'm wondering if they're, I'm hoping they're not going to burn themselves out um, with the amount they're pushing out at the moment. Um, True Sky basically what True Sky does is that it gives you a whole new set of um, sky textures. It also gives you um, new cloud models and cloud dynamics as well um, so what this does is not only does it look pretty look cool um, it does look as it look absolutely the the cloud modeling looks a hell of a lot better than it does on and on other ESP platforms at least not without third-party add-ons um, so that's looking really good but also it actually changes the behavior of the weather as well so you're actually going to get things like um, things that we would normally have would have expected something from Active Sky next. Um, unfortunately, no live weather at the moment. Um, but as I said, it's, you're going to get the more the actual dynamics, um, the weather, the way the weather changes, the way it impacts your aircraft, the actual uh, effect of the turbulence on your aircraft, um, and the effect of clouds and the sort of the the, the visibility layer, the visibility changes uh, when you're in clouds. So that really comes through um, in this update. Uh, a few other minor bug fixes um, on the back of the cold and dark update from last. Week as well, um, but yeah, this one's probably more of a probably you know, as I said, it, it looks good, but it's also some fairly significant changes, underlying changes in the weather system as well that have uh, been uh, long missing from core sim. So it's great to see that being in, in, uh, included as part of the core sim now. Uh, so of course, yeah, this update will roll out um, automatically uh, to users of Flight Sim World just via Steam. So go out and have a check it out now. All right, now moving on from updates and on with actual releases this week, and sticking with the ESP world, uh, we got the guys over at uh, the at uh, Sim Design Group have come out with their latest version of uh, Cairo International Airport. So this one is um, their version two is their reboot. Um, so they are offering it as a discount version of if you did have a previous version um, of their Cairo International. Otherwise, if you're picking up it new, it's coming in at twenty US dollars. Uh, now this one's coming in gives you uh, up to date uh, AFCADs for the airport as it appears at uh, the end of 2016, um, including uh, realistic. Uh, vehicle traffic for not only the airport but also for the town of, for the city of Cairo as well which is also included which is kind of cool uh, great to have that um, it's fully compatible with the GSX services uh, custom ILS has been included for the new runways for the airport as well as uh, charts and AFCAD updates for uh, the uh, a nearby airport of um, uh, Alpha Zulu and Charlie Whiskey as well, and fully custom customized ground map texture and uh, customized buildings for the airport as well. Um, the look, this is a comment I'm going to make on on Sim Design Group. Look, they're fairly affordable. They're fairly low low cost when it comes in the grand scheme of things when it comes to airports. Um, and their actual airports themselves, like the, the the buildings and the taxiway texture they use, are always a fairly solid, good, good fairly good quality. Um, but the photo real that they use to put it to layer it on top of is pretty ordinary to say the, to say the least um, and you know the, sh the screenshots here really sort of showcase that as I said the, the actual work on the buildings that they do and the actual airport stuff that they have is fairly good quality um, it's fairly solid and fairly middle of the road when it comes to the market stuff but as I said the, the, the underlying photo reel that they use to layer it on top of is a little 
little leaves a little bit to be desired. But yeah, there you go. Uh, as I said, if you're wanting an updated version of this airport, though, it's pretty much this is your only cho option to go with. Um, so if you do want to pick it up, again, as I said, you can pick this one up now, coming in at 20 US dollars, available now from Sim Market. Alright, continuing on with scenery releases um, for the ESP world. So we saw the guys over at P Realsoft, um, they've released their uh, latest cityscape. Now this one's a little, this one's, this release is a little weird. Um, so, cool story about this one. Um, this has been released, they've released this in a weird way. So what they've done is they've actually released the photo real city of London. Um, they've actually released that for free, which is pretty cool and pretty awesome um but you get zero autogen with it like absolutely nothing it is dead flat um so be aware of that so but if you want to give it the landmark buildings and some of the actual to actually look like london um then you're going to need to pick up their auto their hd cities london autogen package uh which is coming in at 20 euros 25 us dollars um Look, you know, it possibly makes it a little bit better than default, just looking at it, but from what I'm looking at, you know what, I think you'd be better off spend the money on Orbix and get Orbix, uh, Orbix England, not going to lie, because you get, like, the better version of London included, so, yeah, just going to throw that one out there. Um, but look, as I said, um, in terms of the photo reel, them releasing the photo reel of the actual city for free, that's a pretty cool deal. And at least you know it's probably upgraded by the default. But as I said, the photo reel scenery like sort of wipes out buildings. So if you do want to actually have the autogen, you're essentially going to have to invest in this as well. So essentially, think of this one as a, a two-part download for, for for 25 bucks. Um, if you do want to pick this one up for this uh, this autogen, which is apparently is also compatible with other London photo reel scenery as well. So maybe you'll find that it could work with um, uh, some other stuff like the uh, like Mega Scenery Earth stuff. Um, it might still be useful if you look at, uh, give it a crack as it is available uh, at Sim Market coming in at 25 US dollars or your original equivalent available now. Alrighty, and speaking of Orbix, uh, the guys over at Orbix did release their long-awaited open LC for South America. Now, I just want to clarify this here. A lot of people ask what land class actually is, um, and of course, that's what the LC stands in open and stands for in open LC for South America. Um, so, what land class actually is is the type of ground that you have. Like, you know, is something a forest? Is it a farmer's field? Is it a um, swamp? Is it a urban block? Is is it, so is it like semi-rural? Like, that's the kind of thing that it is. Now, land class, as it ships with... Um uh, with the ESP platforms is fairly limited. It, it, it's not a great deal of stuff in there. Um, if you actually want to get more of it, then you need to have something like this. Um, and this is what it does: is it gives you a whole heap of new textures uh, for the sim to put into an area when it sort of says, you know, th this is areas to be, you know, you know sort of um, urban, urban, uh, sort of urban sprawl. Then this is the textures you can use, and this gives you more textures you can choose from and piece together as a map, um, which means that you get a less less repetition um, so I, if you've ever flown at like you know flight levels um, flight levels you know, at like 60,000 feet um, or you know 38,000 feet and look down you'll see that you get a lot of checkerboarding effect um, at a default um, this minimizes the checkerboarding so it makes it a bit easier and as I said look at looks like cooler. Um, you also get full five season support as well um, uh, across the thing as well as a lot of cool stuff with city textures as well you get some beautiful photo real uh, photo real volcano volcano textures as well for the South America, which is kind of cool is to, to add into it as well. Um, and this is designed to work. You do are required to have FTX Global as a bare minimum installed if you are going to be purchasing the OpenLC South America. Um, and it is highly recommended that you have F Global uh, Vector installed as well. So if you are wanting to add this one to complete your Americas collection from Orbix, um, then this is available now, coming in at fifty five Australian dollars. Uh, so around about fifty, just shy of fifty. Fifty dollars US um, of all your original equivalent available now from Orbix. All right, continuing on with ESP releases, but moving to aircraft this time. The, the guys over Just Flight, um, so they've re released their um, PA twenty eight one six one Warrior two. So this one's uh, come out for them. 
Um, so this is their uh, in-house development team uh, that's come out with this one and uh, brought it out. So the, the Warrior 2 is a four-seater piston aircraft. Uh, one of the, my favourite sort of little GA type aircrafts. I, I, I like these little GA aircraft. I really do. Um, and this one's been released now. As I said, now this is interesting. Now this is um, the guys are just like this time. Now normally what they do is they release this. Um, they'll release one, a one-size-fits-all um, re release. Uh, this is the first time that notably that what they have done is that they have released it um, in as a FSX edition and they've also released a prepared edition. Um, look, I, I, I don't like it when developers do this. Like, straight out, I don't. Particularly not when they're charging the price that they're charging. Um, so we're, we're talking we're talking 40 over 40 US dollars here um, and no lower cost for the FSX version now I I would have been okay with this if they pushed this out at say uh, thirty dollars um, for the FSX edition um, and 30 35 dollars for the prepared edition and then 40 uh, 42 to 40 you know 43 dollars for the combined edition I would have been okay with that um, but whacking people with 40 40 plus US dollars for each version. That's a bit rich. It's a bit nasty. But don't get me wrong, this is looking at as a very high fidelity version of this aircraft and looking pretty amazing um, and very slick. So you're definitely going to be rewarded with your version for this. And speaking of which, uh, as I said, it's a very, uh, very highly detailed model of this, including full HD textures throughout, uh, HD 4K textures throughout, uh, full 3D, uh, fully in interactive cockpit um, with uh, fully, ca fully functional IFR cable avionics, including uh, genuine and sort of you know, true to life KM20s and K KX170 um, comm devices, uh, and uh, full ADF. Uh, and transponder units included there. So it does have Flight 1 GTN GNS integration if you do want to have it, and, and it does have a shift pop up uh, GPS 1000, uh, uh, GPS 100 unit if you would so desire to have it. So, uh, as I said, very highly realistic, a very beautiful looking um, add on for this aircraft, um, very high definition for this one, uh, including uh, deliveries from around the world. So, looking pretty damn amazing, pretty cool. As I said, just my personal issue with the way they're actually doing the pricing structure. But if you do want to grab this one. This one is available now from Just Flight in either its prepared version or in its FSX edition. Uh, available now from Just Flight directly or from your favorite flight sim retailer. Available now. Alrighty, now moving away from the ESP world and moving over to X Plane this week. So this week, X Plane, we saw the guys re we saw the release a reboot version of the DC8 uh, be released. Um, so uh, this is really cool. So this one has been around for the the DC8 uh, 71 has been around. Uh, for a little bit for X-Plane 10, but it's now been fully updated and fully rebooted uh, for X-Plane 11 and it releases an X-Plane 11 edition. Um, so this one's uh, come out and is uh, contains four versions of the DC-8, so it extends the baseline DC-8, uh, 61, the 63, uh, and the 71 uh, freighter version as well. So a uh, fairly comprehensive, fairly detailed uh, version of this one, uh, including full flight testing um, by actual um, uh, test pilots um, and uh, DC-8 captains who uh, check its authenticity. Uh, beautiful, fully detailed 3D uh, cockpit for this one. Lots of details of animation and doors and air various aircraft additional features as well. Um, very highly detailed engine work as well, including the way it actually you know, pushes out the actual, um, you actually get that sort of faint trail, whisper sort of you know, jet fuel, um, unburnt fuel coming out through the back there as well. Um, multiple choices of uh, uh, customised uh, speed back, speed, speed back options as well. And very highly detailed, graphically um, challenging, and graphically set settable uh, options as well uh, to enable you to actually flex your system with your system's capabilities as well. So, as I said, um, it's a it's a reboot. Um, it's been around. It's been a solid performer before for X Plane 10. Uh, fully rebooted for X Plane 11 now. Uh, available now from the X Plane .org store, coming in at 35 US dollars or your original equivalent. Available now. And again, continuing on with flight simulation, but with another simulator or a sim-like, depending on how you want to look at it. So this is from Aerofly FS2. Now they've been sort of hinting that they're sort of teasing that they're going to be releasing um, the venerable uh, Dash AQ400 was going to be coming to Aerofly FS2, um, and it has come out. Not only has it come out this week, it has come out for free, which 
I'm not going to lie, I am very surprised that they did it as a free piece of content. But I'm do don't get me wrong, I am very happy with that. Um, it's looking as a very high fidelity version of this aircraft as well. Um, with a now it's claiming that it's got a very high fidelity uh, flight model. Uh, with full uh, turboprop modeling uh, effects as well um, for the uh, PT6s that the power at. So I'm very look. I'm very eager to look forward to actually try and to, to, to the point where I'm actually re-downloading Aeroflow, reinstalling Aeroflow FS2 to actually give it a try. So look for a video of me coming out with that in the next uh, week or so. Um, as I said, I'm very intrigued by the fact that they're doing it, and as I said very impressed that they're bringing it out as a free content update as well. So yes, uh, if you are an Aeroflow FS2 owner, um, is simply a log into this one, go to the Steam page and click and install uh, to get your free copy of the Q400 available now on Steam. And now moving on to other simulation releases for this week and moving on to the permanent way. So the guys over at Train Simulator have released a new a new uh, addition to the fleet this week. And this week we saw from the guys over at Just Trains actually uh, with the developer of this one. So this is the rebuilt Bullard Light Pacific Steam Locomotive. Um, basically this is an interesting little story um, of a, a train and it kind of, it's got an interesting little aviation twist to this one as well. So essentially, um, the story of this locomotive is the the light, the light Pacifics um, were actually sort of designed and built um, at sort of the end of sort of the, immediately towards the, the later years of World War Two, um, and actually sort of actually sort of pushed it on to the uh, sort of the genesis in World War Two in the immediate post-war era, uh, with the fact that many parts of the British railway system were actually sort of going to be um, either either originally it was going to be planned that everything was going to be electrified, and then there was going to be pure, then it was just in the post-war environment, the wartime and post-war environment. It was going to be that some some of the parts of the railway system were not going to no longer to be electrified. So that suddenly there was this going to be this gap, capability gap. There was going to be a need for actually some more steam locomotives, and the Light Pacific um, tr uh, trains were actually designed to actually fill that gap. And then it was going to be a seen, seen that there were going to be many parts of these railway lines were going to be mod need to be modernised um, for these trains to actually continue on in their service. So 60 of the uh, trains of the Light Pacifics were actually rebuilt um, as part of a uh, modernisation plan during the 1950s uh, to actually sort of keep them going and have them soldier on for until uh, the, they could be replaced by diesel um, or the uh, diesel trains or the actual lines be electrified. So there was these interesting little sort of hybrid uh, trains where this sort of merging of sort of old and new technology where the fact that you know the newer technology was starting to come in um, but it's still a steam locom steam powered locomotive so yeah, as I said it's a very interesting one now these particular um, uh, railway uh, railway engines would actually be sort of go on and be would be named after various um, participant squadrons in the Battle of Britain um, or of some of the uh, West Country um, sort of uh, areas and it's, 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 very interesting little names and, and operations came out. It came as part of this one. So yes, uh, this is a the uh, so a series of um, of ten of these trains have been actually uh, modelled um, uh, for this uh, as they were rebuilt as the uh, bullied uh, light Pacific model trains, um, including uh, it also includes full some uh, rolling stock with appropriate uh, reap uh, liveries as well, uh, as well as uh, head code systems, uh, light controls for the cab, sand safety valves, and whistle particle effects have been included as well, and fully functioning. Um, uh, cab, railway cabs as, and safety equipment has been included as well. So uh, you also get three so, uh, career scenarios are included with this add-on, um, but they do require the use of the Somerset and Dorset route to be um, to be available in your installation as well, which is a separate purchase add-on. Uh, so again, like we see with a lot of the train simulator add-ons. And to get the full experience, you will need to get so it is sort of a cross promotion with something else as well. So uh, just bear that in mind. But as I said, overall looking pretty cool. As I said, this one is uh, from the uh, developer from the Just Trains development team, uh, released on Steam, coming in at twenty US dollars. Available now. Alrighty, in uh, another simulation release this week. So we saw the uh, the guys at MXGP3, which uh, we sort of uh, previewed on the channel here on the Nova Up a little while ago. 
And they've come out with their, one of their first pieces of DLC, which is some three additional uh, tracks uh, from the 2015 MXGP uh, jam- uh, Championship. Uh, so three of their most iconic tracks are the Nakatrosserie, uh, Villasoir Villa Escort, and uh, Odavala. So I've probably mispronounced all three of those, but there you go anyway. So if you are an enthusiast in the MotoGP, um, in the Motocross GP uh, Championship, and you do have the uh, MXGP3 title in your system, uh, it expand your scenarios now with three additional tracks for you to zip around and get very virtually dirty and muddy and championship on so available now for eight US dollars available now on Steam all right in other sort of um, high octane releases this week so the guys over at red dot and playway have come out with their of uh, car mechanic simulator 2018 so uh, car mechanic simulator has got a bit of a pedigree um, it's been around for a while um, I myself have been quite the fan of 2015 the 2015 edition uh, which is a good solid support and a lot of content come out for, for until um, including earlier this year as well. Um, so 2018 take, builds on the franchise as well, coming out um, with um, a, a few new add-ons, a few new features, including um, a highly updated graphics engine for this one, um, both for the cars and for the uh, for your workshop as well. Uh, you've got some more tools and more parts have been included as well, and a lot more vehicles have been included as well. So there's a lot more than just the standard, sort of box standard four. Um, there's about 30-odd vehicles included um, in the course in the core game as well now. Um, They've also done a few little uh, gameplay tweaks and changes as well. Um, Including, uh, it's it's actually making things a lot more, I don't know whether this is good or bad, but things like, um, now when you take a wheel off, for example, um, you you now separate part the wheel and the tyre. They're actually separate parts now. Um, And you actually have to sort of, you know, balance the wheels and the tyres before you put them back on the car and stuff like that. So, um, they've definitely added a few more things into the actual simulation sort of um, of being a car mechanic uh, that have actually sort of been either perhaps missing from previous versions. um, And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of cool, kind of interesting. Um, There's also a few extra features including our full mod support now from day one. Uh, which is something that the mod scene was fairly small for previous versions because it wasn't really supported um, but now they've really opened up the architecture a lot more and are actually encouraging uh, with full modding support available now from launch so which is kind of cool um, now with the launch also comes two day one DLCs now I'm not a huge fan of day one, day one DLC I'm really not I think it's a bit shit actually personally but um, they have chosen to come out with two day one DLCs now this is to add uh, two officially sanctioned uh, sets of vehicles uh, to the uh, sim. Uh, so there's the Mazda DLC. So the Mazda DLC uh, gives you the Mazda RX-7 and the Savannah RX-3 from 1978 vintage, and the Dodge DLC, which gives you the Dodge Charger and Dodge Challenger, so from the 1960s and 70s. Um, so, uh, really cool that you get the full official, uh, they're actually officially sanctioned um, DLC and actual, the, the actual genuine cars are in there. A um, little bit disappointing that it's day one DLC, um, but if you do want to pick it up as part of like, your launch bundle, um, you can pick it up uh, at the bundle, uh, the silver edition bundle, which gives you discounts um, on the DLC, so you can get the whole package for less than 25 bucks. Uh, incidentally, if you are an existing owner of um, 2015 or 2014, uh, you do actually uh, Steam will actually send you a 10% discount code as well for you to upgrade to the latest version as well, so that's kind of cool. So you get an additional 10% on top of the uh, launch bonus as well, so keep an eye out for that if you do want to grab it and continue your example on with a few extra features available now on Steam. Alrighty, in other simulation releases this week, so the guys over at Command Live. So Command Live is sort of this uh, the the harpoon esque uh, simulator, um, sort of uh, for the uh, that's available on Steam at the moment. It's something that's a very much a, a time sink and not for everybody. But if you do want to take the time and get yourself invested in it, they've released their latest official uh, mission pack has just been released or campaign pack. And this is called Pole Positions. Uh, basically, it p- poses a near future scenario um, of uh, actual sort of a bit of conflict in the Arctic. So, sort of going through what happens when um, the global warming sort of starts you know, making the, um, the poles more accessible. 
uh, to both civilians and the military. Um, and then if people want to actually belligerents actually want to start with start surveilling operations, military operations a bit more closely. Uh, so very interesting scenario that's been posed uh, in this uh, DLC um, and in this in this campaign pack. And something is a bit, as I said, this is the thing about Command Live, the the the, uh, the actual uh, core title of Command Modern Air Naval Operations, and also the campaigns they come out with, um, they're very very. very very much realistic, uh, so yeah, very interesting with that one. So yes, uh, so only three US dollars for the campaign pack uh, coming in for coming in. I said interesting, not going to be for everybody, but I said if you are um, a uh, uh, someone who does enjoy this sort of harpoon esque uh, series, you'll probably want for you to actually look at picking up. So yes, available now on Steam. All right, and rounding out the simulation release news for this week. So this is we saw the release of Avon Colony. So Avon Colony has been in sort of early access and sort of um, under development for a while, uh, but has now gone to full release this week. So Avon Colony is a bit of a, a bit of a hybrid but sort of something like yeah, a bit of a, it sort of takes elements of the Anno series, um, takes elements of Civilization, and sort of um, mashes them all together. And a bit of Sims, yeah, a bit of Sim City and uh, Cities XL sort of thrown in for good measure. Um, basically, what it does is puts you in charge um, of expanding a human colony um, on uh, 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 on the the Avon colony on Avon Prime, an alien planet planet in the uh, distant future, um, and many light years from Earth. And it's very interesting because it is an Earth-like planet, but it still has some interesting challenges with you know different oxygen levels and things like that. But it does have a full day-night cycle is included with this one, um, and you've got to do a go through it as it's being a city manager kind of thing, and actually sort of you know build the colony, build the city, but sort of manage the needs and stuff like that. So as I said, it's a very interesting take on the city building genre um, by putting it into a sort of outer space, and but actually looking very good visually. It's absolutely stunning. Um, I've been keeping an eye on this one for a while. Um, so being been been keeping a gentle eye on it and I'm really intrigued by where they're going with it. I think it could be really cool. Um they could it could go horribly, horribly wrong with the development, but so far I think I'm pretty impressed by where it's going. Um and I think if you want to go for something different, if you want to do if you want a um a slightly different simula city building simulation. Um, this could be something that you should really think about getting into. Um, as I said, coming out now, it's gone into full version, uh, full release. It's come out of early access, gone into full release this week. Uh, coming in at a very reasonable price of thirty US dollars um, uh, for the uh, for something that's that it, for the quality of the visuals you're getting alone. Um, yeah, not a bad investment. As I said, it's a very in-depth simulator that from what I, from what I'm seeing so far. So uh, look looking forward to mucking around a bit more with it in the near future. But if you do want to give it a crack and uh, give your city building skills at the edge of the uh, the universe of the known universe a crack, uh, it's available now on Steam for 30 US dollars um, and the soundtrack is the only piece of DLC which is okay for a day one DLC. Uh, that's an extra 5 bucks if you want to pick it up. So yes, av Avon Colony available now on Steam. As I said, that now wraps up the Nova for this week. Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these videos and want to see more. And of course, as always, you can catch up with me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search NovaWing24. Alright folks, thanks very much for joining me. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.